Many thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this week's video. I don't know about you, but I, on the other hand, am a complete nerd when it comes to anything related to the fall season, from Halloween to Thanksgiving to pumpkin spice coffee, cooler weather, long pants, sweaters, and even pumpkin scented candles. And of course, the amazing backdrop of colors, which all culminates into why this is my all time favorite season for photography. But it definitely is not the easiest season for photography as it comes with its own set of challenges that must be addressed, especially from a post-processing perspective. And in this video, I review the things that were the, I guess the proverbial light bulb moments for me when it came to improving my fall photographs over the years. So to jump right into it, we're going to take this image from this point right here. This is the raw photograph and turn it into this image. And we're also going to take this raw file and turn it into this photograph right here. So one of the biggest issues with fall photographs is white balance. And I, and I made a video on this uh, uh, quite a few months ago, but I wanted to bring it up again today because I think fall photographs is the type of imagery, if you will, that causes the, the biggest struggle with determining a correct white balance, at least for me it did. And I feel like most photographers usually do shoot in a raw format. And a lot of times they often will leave their white balance set on auto. I know I definitely do because I know I can adjust it in post later on but almost always your camera is going to pick a white balance that's generally much warmer for a fall scene than it really, really should be. So here is a quick tip that'll help you solve that. So for this particular photograph, once again, this is the, uh, let me go to the develop module real quick here. So this is the raw file. This is a little jump start right here. You can see, uh, just did some basic adjustments here. I did add a, a fair amount of masks through here, just kind of to darken down that bottom left-hand corner, just to brighten up that center area there, kind of darken the sky a little bit. Then I'll toggle them all on and off. Cause as you can see right now, the overall image looks kind of flat. The, the lighting is fairly even throughout the entire scene. And I really wanted to emphasize this center area here because it's one of my favorite aspects of this photograph was that beautiful light just kind of raking through this uh, this valley and illuminating that beautiful windy S-curve uh, S road in the, uh, the foreground leading into the midground. So I wanted to really emphasize that. And I did that by applying all of these different masks. So this is before the masks and after the masks, before and after. So let me close this down and let's go over here to white balance. So let me set this to uh, as shot. So as you can see, this is a cloudy day. There's a lot of clouds in the sky. So if we wanted to come up here and drop this down, say to cloudy, we'll give Lightroom a minute. You can see that it, it definitely warmed it up a, a quite a bit, honestly, if we did it on shade, it would even be warmer. If we switch this back to daylight, that is seeming a little bit more realistic. But if you're anything like me, you struggle with seeing what is a correct white balance. In full disclosure, I, I don't think there really is a, a correct white balance. It's really whatever you want it to be. But from my experience, a lot of times I've found that so many of my fall photographs, looking back on them now, are very, very warm, way warm, way too warm than they should be, almost to the point where when you look at the photographs, that's the first thing you notice is, oh wow, look how warm this photograph is. And I don't think that is really what you want people to see when they first look at one of your fall photos. So this has been a real big help for me. So we have it set on daylight right now. It looks okay, but if you take the saturation and crank it all the way up here, you can see that there is a more warm tones, much more warm tones, then there are cool tones up here. And my ultimate goal is to always kind of balance that out. I want to, I don't want it to be too dominant on warm tones. I don't want it to be too dominant on cool tones. I want it to be fairly equal. So what I like to do, let me just reset this. And if we take this back to cloudy where we were, crank the saturation all the way up, you can really see how warm it is. If we take this from cloudy to shade, you guess it even becomes even more warm. So cranking that saturation all the way up to, to a 100 is a great way to easily illustrate what's happening. So if we take this back to as shot, the workflow that I go through, I never use those pre preset, um, I guess presets inside of Lightroom. And here's the workflow that I go through. So what I'll do is I'll come up here to the, uh, the color picker tool and I'm gonna find a neutral target. So somewhere along this uh, road here, I think looks pretty neutral. So something about right there, I think looks good. And if we take the saturation and bump this all the way up to positive 100, you can see now that it's starting to look a little bit more balanced. The cool tones definitely are seem to be a little bit less than the warm tones, but that's kind of to be expected. It is a fall photograph overall, but the, the warmer tones are not completely overpowering the cooler tones. So this is starting to 
to get into that range where I think that it is a correct white balance. So now I will go ahead and take that saturation back down. But definitely using the eyedropper and finding a neutral target, usually something gray or light gray, is a great way to go ahead and set that. But to go ahead and uh, confirm if it is what you want it to be, take that saturation all the way up just to look for any kind of dominating color cast to see if the warm is dominating the cool or the cool is dominating the warm. You ultimately kind of, at least I ultimately do, want it to be kind of even. So, and then of course the calibration section. Now I'm not gonna do a deep dive on this yet. I'm gonna do that on the, uh, the next photograph, but as I toggle this on and off, you can see what a difference that has done to this photograph right here. And in the next photo, we'll do a lot more with the calibration section, but that is by far one of my favorite ways to enhance color really in any photograph but I definitely use it more often in the uh, the fall time of the year because I think it just really makes those those photographs just kind of explode those photographs those colors explode off the screen. So now the last thing I want to mention on this photograph is the let me come down here to and I do want to, to make a, a note that there's nothing done to the vibrant section here. There's nothing done to the saturation section. There's nothing done in color grading right through here. There has been nothing done to the HSL section as you can see. All of that was done right here inside of the color calibration. All all of the color enhancing. So that is an absolute uh, fantastic tool inside of Lightroom. And like I mentioned, I'll go over that in a little bit more detail in the next photograph. But I wanna show you something real quick with this photo. If you come over here to the HSL section and you go to luminance, if you're not familiar with what luminance is, it's basically the brightness value of a particular color. So if, let's say if you come over here to blue and you can see the sky up there as you can become a brighter version of blue, you can make it much darker but it basically is the the brightness level of a particular color. So if we come over here, there is a fair amount of green in the scene. And if we wanna make those greens really kind of stand out, we can bring up the, uh, the luminance to plus 100. And as I rock this back and forth, you can see what that is doing to the green right through there. So maybe just leave it there. Let's do the same thing with the yellow and look at what that is doing to the scene. And what's really cool about using luminance on the dominant colors in your photograph is that it's like, I guess, dodging with color. You're basically brightening up specific colors. And it's just a great way to create color separation. It's a great way just to brighten up certain areas of your scene. And as I toggle this on and off, you can see what has happened in those, those colors right there. We didn't do anything to exposure or white or the white point or add any highlights anywhere. All that we did is just increase the luminance of the orange channel, the yellow channel and the green channel which i think is super super cool that all of that is done just by using luminance so now on the next photograph we're going to jump into the calibration section which i mentioned probably multiple times already i absolutely love so let's go to that photograph and once again we're going to take this raw photo and turn it into this right here and then here is the photo that's kind of the jumping off point right here i don't want to uh, bore you with all the the small little details but this is all that was really done to this photograph in the basic section right here did apply a, uh, a, a tone curve just to add a little bit of additional contrast to the overall scene. And uh, let's see, you know, added a, a small vignette, but uh, nothing crazy right through there. And once again, nothing has been done in the HSL color section at all. So I'm gonna come over here to calibration and I don't wanna go over this too much in detail on this video because it'll make this video like 25 minutes long. But I it did, or I have, or I am, releasing a free course all about the color calibration tool inside of Lightroom and how you can use it to improve your colors, which I'll flash a QR code on the screen right now or a card up here that you can download that. It's a completely free course, a 30 minute course all about it, but it does a deep dive all about color calibration. But I absolutely love it. So if I come over here to the, let's say, uh, maybe the blue primary hue, and if we swing this to the left, all the way to the left, you can see what it's gonna do here. You can take it all the way to this way, in which you definitely wouldn't wanna do that. But I am going to bring the blue primary hue over a fair amount, maybe to about right here. I don't think I'm gonna do anything with the saturation. I'm gonna come up here to the green primary, and I take this all the way to the left. You can see what that did. If I take it all the way to the right, and see what that did. I think I'm going to take this, I kind of like the way it looks all the way to the left right here. And uh, maybe with the saturation, I think I'm just gonna bump that up just a little bit, maybe about right there. And then the red primary, let's bring that all the way to the right just so you can see. Let's bring it all the way to the left. And I do this with almost all of these types of tools just so I can get a better gauge on what it is doing. I think somewhere right around there is looking pretty good maybe bring that saturation of that down just a little bit to about right there. And I kind of like the way that that looks. And if we toggle this on and off, so this is before and after, before 
and after. And you can see what a world of difference was done in this overall photograph. And we didn't do anything except the color calibration just then. And it just, it changes not only all the colors, but it also adds a little bit more depth to the overall, the depth to the, the, uh, the colors themselves. It also adds a little bit of additional contrast to the photograph. It's just absolutely amazing what it can do to colors and especially fall colors as well. So once again, I'll toggle this on and off. This is before and after, before and after. And you can bring up the, the saturation of the blue primary channel if you want to, to really make those colors pop off the screen. Or of course you can desaturate it. The, it is totally up to you what you want to do, of course. I think I'm just gonna bring it down just a touch to before and after, before and after, but it absolutely transformed that scene. And then the, the last thing I wanna mention with this photograph is color grading. So I don't use color grading too terribly often, but I use it more often in the fall, mainly because in the fall, generally speaking, the highlights are going to be warmer. Those are usually your leaves and trees and things like that. And then the shadows are usually a little bit cooler. And it's a great way to create color separation in a fall scene. So what I would like to do a lot of times is just tint the shadow area of a photograph a cooler color. And that's what I did right here. So if I click on shadows, you can see this right here. I just basically tinted the, uh, the shadows, this very, very soft blue. If, if I crank up the saturation, you can really see what it did but I definitely wouldn't do it that much. It was just a very subtle amount. And if you look at like this area up through here, you can probably see it. This is without it, and this is with the tone. This is with and without. Just something to keep in mind. If you're not familiar with what color grading is, it basically gives you the ability to tone certain areas of your photograph a certain color. You can tint your shadows a color. You can tint your midtones a certain color, and you could tint your highlights a certain color as well. But tinting the um, the, the shadows a co slightly cooler tone is a, is something that's kind of fun to play with with uh, fall fall photographs as well. So. Before I do wrap up this week's video, video though, I just wanna say a huge thanks to the longtime sponsor of the channel, which is Squarespace, who I use for absolutely every single thing related to my website and e-commerce needs. Squarespace provides a robust and beautiful online platform to develop your website. You can showcase your photography using Squarespace's professional portfolio designs and display your work using customizable galleries in order to make it your own. And with Squarespace's online store feature, you'll have access to all the tools you'll need to start selling your physical, digital, or service products online immediately. You can even use Squarespace's new asset library so you can upload, organize, and access all your content from a single platform place in order to easily find and use them across the entire Squarespace platform. So if you're looking to start a new website or possibly upgrade your current website, check out squarespace.com forward slash Mark Denny for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So I hope you enjoyed this week's video. I wanted to get this video out uh, as close to the fall equinox as possible, which I think by the time this video goes out, it'll be the fall equinox is just a couple days before, which is uh, good timing. So it's, uh, like I mentioned, I hope everyone is, is, is as excited for the fall season as I am. If you have any questions about anything in this video, please leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back in touch with you. If you did enjoy it, if you could, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, thank you all so much for carving out a little bit of time to spend it with me here today. And I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.